one of the things that always strikes me about your novels, and I've read several, Scullian Empire, your near future novels, and even your fantasy for Luna, is how much there is of unintended consequences and how you work through them, you know. Uh, a, an heir doesn't have the right magic in your books for Luna, you know, and how that affects, and it has the snowballing effect that changes so much as the story arc goes along. It's both the story arc and the development of the characters. Mm -hmm. You know, if they know that they are supposed to be able to do something, and for whatever reason, whether it's lacking the correct ability uh, in the, the fantasy stories, or like, for example, the story I was just talking about, about the singer, he comes from this family where they're geniuses, or they're heroes, they're fighter pilots, you know, world leaders, political adepts. Then he feels completely outclassed. Mm -hmm. He's unable to, in his mind, measure up. And what is the intended, unintended consequence? They're the ones targeted by their enemies. Their enemies neutralize the powerful ones, and he's the last one, at one point, left standing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have to deal with him, which was completely unintended. Do your characters often surprise you, or are you completely in control? Um, I wouldn't say either. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. It's all in my head. I mean, I had the whole, the basic arc for the, the Ruby Dynasty series, uh, what some people call Skolian, mm -hmm. was in my head. I used to, when I was a kid, I'd play with these things just to, to pass the time. But the details weren't all there. Mm -hmm. So, um... I know I have an idea what the characters are going to do and where they're going. Sometimes when I start writing the story, it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. You know, like you often hear authors say, well, my character strode in and took over the story. I wouldn't really say that. What I would say was that I had developed the character to a point that what I originally thought I would do with her or him doesn't fit the plot. Mm -hmm. So I kind of see, well, what does fit? So in that sense, I do let the character take over. But he's not really. I mean, it's all yeah. coming out of my head. Absolutely. And all this goes back to when you were little, stealing your dad's science fiction novels, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, my, go ahead. I was just going to say, he's rather fabulous in his own right. Uh, didn't he discover the uh, iridium anomaly that everybody has built the, the theory of the extinction of dinosaurs around the asteroid? Yes. Strike? Oh, that's a great story. And I was growing up while all this was happening. The way it worked out was Louis Alvarez uh, was a uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, astrophysicist at the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, uh, which is associated with the University of California. And my dad also works up there. So one day Louis came to him and he said, you know, I have these samples of you know, material from the, the boundary between the Cretaceous, you know, when the Cretaceous period had its boundary and changed to a new geological era. And he said, would you analyze this for iridium? You know, we're, we're checking to see the amounts of different types of materials. And my dad said to him, oh, well, no, there's not going to be enough iridium in the sample to detect. Okay, and Louis said, well, you know, I know you have this, you've developed this new technique called neutron activation, which my father's one of the pioneers of. He said, could you just give it a try to see if you can find anything? Mm -hmm. And my dad said, well, okay, maybe I will. Louis's very persuasive. So my dad finally did. He worked with Helen Michaels, who was a um, wonderful nuclear chemist. Who mm -hmm. he, and, he and Helen worked for many years, worked on many projects. And so finally they got around to doing it. And my dad said, this is wrong. Uh, we made a mistake. There's way too much iridium. So they did it over and over again because they were convinced they made a mistake. And finally, the, he, they went to Louis Alvarez and they said, we don't understand what's wrong here because we're getting way too much iridium. And they, they found, they then went to look for other work that had been done. And they found other indications from other signs. So they tried a lot of theories. And the only one that fit was the idea that a comet or an asteroid hit the Earth. And the, the seminal paper was published by Louis Alvarez, his son Walter, my father, Frank Acero, and Helen Michaels. Cool. I mean... It was so much fun. 
How perfect is that? Yeah, and I used to steal the science fiction books too. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. What's next for you? Well, um, the anthology is coming out. Um, I'm actually working on, right now, I'm working with some musicians. I'm choreographing and writing a screenplay to make a rock opera out of the, the soundtrack to Diamond Star, which is the, the book we were talking about before. Yes. Where I, we'll actually perform, we'll dance, and we'll have dancing and singing and music, rock music. And, and videos. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a few videos up, but... So that's one thing I'm working on. I'm also writing another book. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with some musicians to write music, songs for that book, too. Can you tell us anything about that book? Well, that one's still very much in progress. Okay, fair enough. Any, we're just coming up on the end, and I want to thank you for talking with us today. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I think just that I've been having a wonderful time doing all this multimedia. Mix. I think science fiction is ideally suited to mixing the media. And I couldn't imagine a more fun way to, to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great job, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and hey, your day job uh, as a consultant for the government, as a full professor of, at the University of Maryland at well, Baltimore? Well, I'm not a full professor. Not? Okay. No, I, teach enough, I teach as many classes as I can and still have time to write. But Still, you are a professor, yeah. and you are teaching at University of Maryland Baltimore, Baltimore campus. True. That ain't shabby. <laughs> thank you so much, Catherine. Well, thank you. And thank you from BuzzyMultimedia.com.